Welcome to My Tiny Tojo versus the Airwaves. Week number, we have no freaking idea because we've lost count. 13, Pretty 12, much. I don't know. We but don't know. we are back. Back to, I don't know, an ever annoy? Annoy everyone? Uh, what we to do? Uh, pee on the radio stations and say no. And pee on our many, many listeners and tell them yes. We what? pee for you. What? All right, all right. Besides, besides the point, we're 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 right off topic. <laughs> so our us topic? No. Our our topic? Uh, I mean, we never get off topic, right? No, uh. no, 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 never. <laughs> so we are alone yet again because we have no friends and no guest. So darn. we have plenty of friends, but they all have more important things going on in their lives, <laughs> like church and uh, curfew at ten o'clock. <laughs> Who has a curfew at ten o'clock? Cutter. Why do you oh. think he can never do the show? He's got to let his mom know two days in advance before uh, he goes uh, out. It's I have him. a very important something I need to share with the airwaves. Thanks, you got it on me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was aiming for it. Damn it. <laughs> well, while TJ's over here drinking on the job, our topic for this week is hobbies. <laughs> hobbies, yes, strange hobbies. Not just the normal, you know, I like to... You know, take scrap, long walks on the beach. Yeah, scrap hooking. Because scrap hooking's for um, queers. And, and, <laughs> and my crazy queers. And my not. mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Older women, possibly pretty, hitting that midlife crisis area. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. So the reason why we came up with this topic is last weekend, this weekend, the weekend before, some weekend ago, TJ did this awesome thing, so why don't oh, you tell us about it? Yes, that's right. Uh, we talked about it in our last episode, but this uh, it is now dead and gone by now, and it's called The 48, and this would be my fourth 48 ever, and possibly my last, if uh, I I really want to try doing it once, though. And if we don't turn it in, worse, worse comes to worse, I mean, you don't want to do it for real, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But they are expensive. Anyway. Oh, really? Okay, uh-huh. never mind. But the 48, and that is a twice a year thing, once with UNLV, which from here on out I can't compete in. If okay. I compete in, I can't be a key member. I can't be a director. I can't be a producer because, you know, it's time for yeah. other people to have a shot. Yeah. Uh, but I could probably act or something or maybe write it or shoot it, cameraman, because they don't really have anything to do with it. Okay. But, all right. Yeah, and then it's all, that's in the fall, and then there's one in the spring. And that's the Vegas 48. So there's UNLV 48 and Vegas 48. And we just passed the Vegas 48. And um, the 48, for those of you who don't know, is you get a, at 6 o'clock on Friday evening, you get a prop, a line of dialogue, a character, and a genre. Mm -hmm. And then 6 o'clock, not a minute later, and they're very strict about that, very, yeah. very strict. Yeah, because I remember some people, they were saying how some people turned it in like five minutes late and they wouldn't accept it. Nope. Do not Jesus. accept it. Nope. So uh, did you get it like on, just on time or like a little bit early? Uh, most of the time I've always gotten it in just on time. But this particular instance, we made it there with about 20, 25 minutes to spare. Oh, nice. Nice. Yep. Were you all the first ones to turn it in? No, no. There were people that were already there and drunk, which means that they had gotten there probably an hour or so before and oh, had, wow. a, had a few celebratory drinks. But anyway, you get those four <laughs> Plus things. Plus the lack of sleep. And then yeah, it's right, like, right. from there on out. Yeah, yeah. so th- you get those four things, and you have 48 hours to make a movie incorporating all of those things. Yeah. And they're usually something really, really crazy. Like, I remember the very first 48 I ever had, our line of dialogue was... I'm going to get that crazy wabbit. And it wasn't rabbit. It wasn't crazy. It was crazy wabbit. That's stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's like, it, it sucks if you have a serious film. Did you just kill my pet fly? That was Bob, you asshole. Uh, well, you do not have <laughs> flies buzzing around your place. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. No, that's the situation. Your pet fly that you're afraid to pet and Shut touch. Up. I don't want to touch it. It's, it's my pet fly. I love him, but, you I thought know. it was a fly, but then it, it looked like an ant with wings, and I was like, what the hell is it's the like world coming to? Something. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're so good at our jobs. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, so this year we had the character Ned Chuddington, and he must be within the 1%. So, 
That may be however you take it. I remember there was one film, the Box City film, where he was the 1% of, because he was the only Because he's the only guy with a belt on. So there was a hundred... I thought that was, like, I love their Box City thing, uh-huh. but I did not like that idea. I thought it was the stupidest idea. So it was pretty much like they're, I guess, against or trying to, I guess, like, the, the guy with the belt was the antagonist, uh-huh. and then it was, like, following the protagonist or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I don't know, but it was really awesome. I really liked your film. It was so cool. Thank you, like, I thank really you. loved it. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, though. It's like, it's really hard, because watching them, you some of them are just so funny and so creative, and you're so happy to sit down and watch them. But at the same time, you can't really watch them, because there's just nothing put into it. You know what I mean? It's like, they had a great idea, but they yeah. just didn't have the talent to pull it off, Oh yeah. video-wise. Oh, yeah. And I feel like our team, you know, ours yeah. was not the most entertaining one, and I'm perfectly okay with that. But it was the best but it footage. Was, but, like, the it footage was, was really, real, really It looked looking. like a real movie. But I remember I was super impressed. But, I don't know. I mean, I really want to try it out. But I just... Because, you know, you were telling me about, like, it's 48 hours. So most, most, I guess, team members don't sleep. Yeah, it kind of depends what your job is. If you're an actor, you'll get some sleep. Okay. You definitely will get some sleep. Because, you know, there's just times that we just can't shoot. We got stuff to do. And, yeah. uh... And you'll take a two-hour nap here, four-hour nap near, there, eight hours there, and you'll be okay. But for the big players like myself and the cameraman and the sound guy and the director, yeah, uh, we don't get any sleep. Okay. Because it's, it's literally what you do, you know, is you get those four things, and the first thing you do is you brainstorm about what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, and then you, with your team, you kind of come up with a rough idea, and then everyone goes to sleep. Yeah. Except for the director and the writer and whoever else presumably needs to stay up. Uh, and then they all sit down and they write a script. And that's usually done about 4 or 5 in the morning. I remember this time we, we had the idea set in stone by midnight. Yeah. Everyone went to sleep except me and the director. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wrote a script and it took about us 5 hours or so. Oh, wow. Just, just to, to, you know, it's only like 7 minutes long, but you really need to plan. You need to have to write it because every second counts on this thing. You can't say, okay, okay, we'll have them say something kind of like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. if they say something kind of like this, and on the day that you're shooting it doesn't work, you spend another hour just trying to figure out what they should have said, when you can just write it. Yeah. So we write a script, and that was done by 5 o'clock, and, and then people start preparing for the shoot at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. This time we didn't have anything we had to shoot, uh, we had to prepare for. We were pretty well prepared now. Like, mm-hmm. I remember my last 48, we had to get a whole bunch of supplies. So it was, like, 6 o'clock in the morning, we were going to shoot in an hour, and we made a last-minute run to Walmart and bought, like, $100 worth of crap. Oh, Jesus. But this time, no, we were good. And so the director started waking people up, telling what it was needed to do. And I just, uh, I made breakfast for everybody. Oh, yeah. nice. Eggs and bacon and... Yeah, yeah. And then, so we shot one mile under the sewers. E- yep. Yeah, I just can imagine that smelling so bad. Yeah. Like, so bad. <laughs> I don't know. I hate I hate things that smell bad. <laughs> you smell bad. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, but I had an ex-boyfriend, literally, when he smelled something like the sewers, like, oh, you didn't go to my middle school. At my middle school, they had a sewer right next to one of the classrooms. And it was one of the classrooms, it was kind of like a pod, except uh-huh. that it was actual building. Uh-huh. Like, you had to walk out of the main, the main uh, school building, and then you had to go into this little... Okay. Like, building that only had two or three classrooms in it, and every time we walked by, we would just, like, gag, because uh-huh. it was so bad, and I had an ex-boyfriend where he could not stand the smell so bad, like, literally, he almost vomited, like, the wind would blow just the right direction, where it went straight <laughs> to our faces, and he'd be, <laughs> I mean, it was just, like, really, I thought he was going to vomit. <laughs> right, right, right. So, what was happening was that it was raining that day, and we were really afraid that the sewers were going to flash flood. Yeah. And so, the director went down there, and he said that, it's okay. We're gonna be okay. Yeah. Uh, so he went and got everyone and led them into the led them in there, and I waited because there was two people that were running late and they had some very important props. Yeah, yeah. So I waited outside until they showed up. Yeah. And then so I joined them about twenty minutes later. Follow uh, went in through the sewer entrance, walked in pitch black for a mile until I finally saw the team and they, it was they were standing in this opening. Yeah. And um. I was like, wow, this is such a cool place, because it's pitch black, and then all of a sudden, sunlight, and a cathedral of graffiti. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was just a cathedral. Uh, it was amazing. And I was like, wow, 